Hello and welcome back to Read Becca. We are fully in swing of Lovember Readathon. If you don't know what Lovember is, this is a month long romance readathon. So if you want to get started, you still have plenty of time. I will link all the details down below. Um, if you are participating, I am so excited because we are going to check in on our first week's progress here. So I thought, I thought we would do check-ins maybe once a week, um, toward the end of the week, Thursday or Friday. I'm going to keep it very casual and just update where I'm at and feel free to comment with what you've got in progress. So this week I read a book and a half, which is pretty darn good. Um, I think that puts me, um, I had as well a big heavy historical fantasy that I was reading. And so, so I think a book and a half is great progress considering. And that puts me on par to complete, I believe, all six of the prompts as well as the three additional books that I had pulled. So, so my moonshot might be possible. We'll see. Um, so let's talk about the actual books. So the first one that I read um, and completed is Knit Pearl, A Baby and a Girl by Hattie Bell. And I pulled this for the new to you author uh, prompt. I have not heard anybody talk about this and it was adorable. I really enjoyed this. So this one follows Poppy who is pregnant. Um, she, she had a one night stand with an ex and um, unexpectedly has, has gotten pregnant. So this actually starts with Poppy going to Planned Parenthood. And that is a really, really interesting way to start it. It's a really good portrayal of the experience and um, going to counsel with someone. And so, so Poppy is there and um, has a clinic escort, um, the people that, that kind of meet and walk them up to, to the clinic, uh, Rhiannon, and they have a great rapport, but she's so stressed out, right? And so she has a very good experience in Planned Parenthood and, and winds up coming out, um, leaning more towards keeping the baby. And so she, while she is inside though, spots a flyer for a knitting group. Stitch and Bitch, which I got a kick out of because if you are in a certain corner of booktube, you know that uh, Kalinati, The Book Finch, Bookish Die, and Brie Reads Books host a, a monthly live stream called Stitch and Bitch. So I, I got a kick out of that. And uh, so she spies that and decides to go check it out. She doesn't really knit. She doesn't really follow through with anything. And so she is going to try again and um, make some little items for her baby. And so she, she shows up to this group and lo and behold, her clinic escort, Rhiannon, is there. And initially she kind of thinks that Rhiannon is, is with another girl in, in the group. Um, but she also, a poppy, is not quite out as bi. And so she's not sure if she wants to, to really pursue things. And we find that kind of is a theme, that poppy is very insecure and she she assumes that she's going to get negative judgments about every little thing all the time. And that all traces back to a lot of baggage that she has with her family. So that was a really interesting dynamic that added some layers to this. So um, obviously Poppy and Rhiannon do wind up heading it off and they have instant chemistry, uh, but they kind of slowly progress because of this insecurity between them. And so they, they wind up hitting it off and forming a relationship and having to work through a lot of this baggage that she has. And she does slowly begin to have her own self-confidence over the course of this relationship. And that's one of the things I enjoyed the most, um, even more than, you know, the actual relationship, her character growth was so good. Um, so I, I enjoyed that a lot. I enjoyed the aspects of her, her seeking help from Planned Parenthood and getting um, counsel and support throughout her pregnancy there. Uh, so she does continue to go to Planned Parenthood versus going to um, the, the OBGYN that her mother is trying to push her toward. I have been through that experience myself where, you know, as an adult, I kind of felt pushed to to go to a traditional OBGYN and um, being in the part of the US that I am in, um, I had really bad experiences all around. They tend to um, overwhelmingly just not know what to do with you when you are there specifically not to use half of their services that they, they really 
focus on. And um, so, so I've been through that, that scenario where I actually, I do go to Planned Parenthood for all my um, women's health care. And um, it's, it's great the services that they offer and this really showcases that that wide variety that it, it's not just abortion and that they they do provide great support um, for prenatal care as well um so I, I really like that that element as well um i didn't as much like the third act uh, conflict so that always comes up and i i tend to not like it most of the time so initially there was there was a first and a second third act conflict. And the first one I really, really did enjoy because they basically turn around and work through it and they just have a conversation about it. And I loved that. And through through most of this book, they have really great communication. Uh, so I, I appreciated that so, so much. And then they have another big blow up and um, it it doesn't work out as well as quickly. Um, obviously, it's a romance, so it doesn't end in a happy, happily ever after, but they have some big problems to work through. So I wish that they had had less of those problems and had just worked through them together. Um, yeah, but overall, man, I really enjoyed this and I am so, so glad I picked this up. The second one I'm not quite through. Um, so this one I'm about halfway through. And uh, I picked this one up on the recommendation of Cousin from Always Doing. And I have enjoyed this so, so much. So this has really witty um, discussion between the two characters. They are so smart and fun. Um, the back and forth is, is absolutely great. So that alone really carries me through. But the premise of this is so fun. So this is all about this family, the Winchesters, who are wards of quirky old man who passed away recently. And so they they have no standing in society, really. But um, they they all have special skills, we will say. So Chloe is not noticeable to others, really. And so she can disguise herself and, and go around in society. And um, she that makes her very good at, at doing heists. So she has all these skills at doing that. And um, they had a standing um, they were, they were nemesis, nemeses uh, with the Duke of Faircliffe, who was an old man, and he has recently passed away as well. And so he... So the second book that I finished was... So the second book I, I'm working on... So the second book that I'm working on is The Duke Heist by Erica Ridley, and I picked this up on a Cousin from Always Doing's recommendation of the more recent sequel to this, and um, I'm enjoying this so very much. So the, the two primary characters have absolutely great back and forth, like it's awesome for just that, but the premise of this is so fun. So um, Chloe Winchester is part of a family of wards of this old man. He kind of adopted a bunch of um, urchins who who now he has trained to have special skills. And so she is plotting this heist because the Duke, <laughs> there's cats running by, uh, the Duke of Faircliff was really their nemesis. And he, he came and stole a valued family painting uh, and left them this nasty old vase that, that they don't want. And so they're trying to get their painting back. And so Chloe is now trying to get the painting from the, the Duke's son, um, the new Duke of Air Faircliff, and uh, she, she plans this whole convoluted heist and uh, manages to get out with it to the carriage and, and races away in the carriage and realizes that she has taken the Duke's carriage with him.